enter the stage, clearly introduce themselves to everyone else, and we don't need to record it quite the same way as previously, but please make it clear who you are and who you're representing, and good luck. Good morning, all the jurors and my dear opponents and the reviewers and all the audiences presenters. I'm Gong Zhiyan from Chinese Team and I'm the reporter of Liquid Film Motor. So let's first see the outline. First I will introduce uh, introduction and then the theoretical analysis, then the experiment, and finally I will reach the conclusion. So first, in the introduction, I will first review the problems and the preliminary experiments. So first let's review the problem. For the uh, for a soap film on a flat frame, put the film in an electric field parallel to the film surface and pass an electric current through the film. The film rotates in its plane. Investigate and explain the phenomena. And the key word are film and rotate. And the task we're going to do is to explain and investigate. Okay, then let's see the preliminary experiment. So let's first see the preliminary experiment setup. You can see these are two power plates and these are two electrolysis lectures. And here's a tiny film and here's a CCD camera to record the rotation. And in uh, next uh, experiment, we'll use the CCD camera to get the BMP picture and we'll use the pixels in the BMP picture to get the velocity of the rotation. And maybe this is not quite clear, and here's the schematic. You can see these are two power plates, and these are two electrolysis electrodes, and here's the film. And in the preliminary experiment, we use 30% glycerin, and also this uh, slide view. We zoom the film a little bit to eliminate the effect of the gravity. So let's see the phenomenon. Uh, I guess you can see quite clearly. Uh, you can see the colorful film, which is caused by the film interference and the rotation. Okay, so let's move on to the theoretical analysis. In the theoretical analysis, I will try to solve three problems. First, why can it rotate? And when can it rotate? I mean, the criteria for rotation. And how does it rotate? I mean, the uh, kinetic equation for rotation. Okay, so let's first see why can it rotate. Uh, since I put an external electric field to it, based on the uh, uh, problem in IYPT 2012, the uh, floating water bridge, it has implied that in the external electric field, a linear cross chain-like structure can form in the water. You can see in this picture, these are chain-like structures. And this transforms the Newtonian fluid to beam type plastic fluid. And all of my theory were based on this beam type plastic fluid. Okay, this is another function of the external electric field. I believe the external, when there is no external electric field, you can see the dipoles are completely random in the film. And when I apply the external electric field to it, it will, uh, it will cause the polarization equilibrium. And here's the equation for the polarization equilibrium. Okay, so then I apply a current to it, since First, it gains a polarization equilibrium, which means the positive charge will accumulate this way, which means it will have a constant uh, positive, uh, positive charge and negative charge here. And since I add a current to it, it will cause the charge to migrate this way, which means it will have a constant uh, torque, driving torque on the film, and this causes the rotation. And here's the, form, uh, here's the equation for the driving torque. Okay, so this explains why it can rotate. So let's see when can it rotate, the criteria for rotation. Since we got the driving torque, then if we can have this driving torque, then we can use the torque equilibrium to get the, this equation. And since I use the beam type plastic fluid and the static resistive moment, it comes from the yield stress. So here's the uh, static resistive moment and then I can, this, I can get this equation. For the same type of the liquid film, the tau zero, which is the field stress, is constant, and the epsilon, which is the humidity, is, uh, is also the constant. So for the same type of the uh, liquid film, this is the constant. 
So we can simplify to this equation, which means the stress of the external electric field and the uh, voltage of two electrolysis electrodes should reach a threshold, then it can start rotating. So then let's see how does it rotate. So first uh, we consider the yield stress, which is here, and the business force, which is here. Then we can get this um, uh, dragging torque. And then we use the dragging torque and the dragging torque to get the resultant moment. And then we apply differential to it, then we can get the resultant moment in each circle. You can see here, we. Uh, we use a lot of circles in this uh, liquid film motor. And, we, and then we use the Newton's second law of rotation and the new, result, new resultant moment we get to get this new equation. The UT is the uh, first derivative of the uh, velocity. But since it has something, it has relationship with the time, so we, th uh, so we solve this problem using when r is zero, the velocity is zero, and when r is equals to the radius of the liquid film, it is also the zero, and when time is zero, it is, the velocity is also zero, and we're assuming that the time is unlimited, which means it achieves a stationary uh, condition. So then we can get this equation. We can see that the higher the business force, the lower uh, the, the lower the rotational speed, and the uh, uh, from in the center of it, it can reach the highest speed, and away from the center, the speeds become lower. Okay, so let's do the experiments. So first, based on the uh, rotational threshold, we, we change the proportional glitch rate, which, we, which we, we believe it will change the total zero, which is the yield stress. And also for the rotational speed, we tested the angular velocity distribution and external electric field and electrolysis electric electric field and dynamic viscosity. Okay, so let's first see the rotational threshold. We set some of the external electric field as constant and we elevate the electrolysis electric field. When it starts rotating, we record the figure of the, uh, of the electrolysis electric field. And here's the figure we obtain. Here's the uh, logarithm external electric field, and here's the logarithm of the uh, internal electric field. And from this figure, we can see it matches to our um, uh, to our theory very well. And we can also see that the higher the proportion of the glycerin, the lower the threshold. We can see here it is 30%, 50%, and 70%, and the threshold becomes lower. And here's the theory line. We can see we use the tau zero as uh, 10 to uh, negative fourth. And then is the rotational speed. First I uh, tested the uh, distribution of the angular velocity and I tested under the uh, electrolysis electric field is 50 voltage and the external electric field as 200 voltage. And here's the figure. We can see near the center of it, it achieves the maximum velo the angular velocity and away from the center, the speed becomes lower. And here's the theoretical line and here's the experimental line. We can see although the uh, experimental line is a little bit higher than the theoretical line, which I believe is caused by the error of the CCD camera, but the trends matches the theory line very well. And also the rotational speed, we first uh, tested the external electric field, which means we set the electrolysis voltage as constant and we elevate the exter external electric field. And here's the figure. We can see the higher of the external electric field, the faster it rotates. And also the higher the uh, internal electric field, the steeper the slope you can see here. And these three straight lines are experimental lines, and these dashed lines are the uh, theoretical line. And you can also see the experimental line matches the theoretical line very well. And then is the rotational speed uh, with the electrolysis electric field. And here's also the figure. We can see also the higher the electrolysis voltage, uh, the faster it rotates. And we can also see that the uh, higher the voltage of two plays, the steeper the slope. 
you can see here. And the, uh, this dashed line is also the theoretical line, and the uh, straight line is also our experimental line. And we also tested the density, the viscosity, and the conductivity. And we tested under the external electric field is 400 voltage, and the electrolysis voltage is th uh, 300 voltage. And you can also see here, this is the conductivity since we add uh, the salt to it, and um, here's the angular velocity. We can see that the higher the viscosity, the slower it rotates, but this law, uh, but the speed rotation will not change with the conductivity, which you can see is uh, almost at the constant. So I believe the ionization theory is wrong to my theory. Yeah. And here's all the conclusions we've got. We first tested the threshold of the rotation, uh, and we get the electrolysis uh, electric field, and the external electric field should reach a constant, and higher the proportion of the glycerin, the lower the threshold, and the liquid film should be polar liquid, and for the polar liquid, the dielectric constant has slight impact on the threshold, in my theory. And the speed of the rotation, the stronger the external electric field, the faster it rotates. The stronger the electrolysis voltage, the faster it rotates. And the conductivity has no contribution to the speed. And the higher the viscosity, the lower the rotational speed. Okay, so this is all my presentation. Thank you.